Mm. So, Yannette, tell me a little bit about the community service okay. that you provide here in the area because it's very important for people to understand that this is an incredible breast centre, right. but it's not just for people that can afford to come here. Right, absolutely. It's for people, they're also providing services for people that can't afford to come in. Can you go in right. a little bit about that? Because I think it's important that other people know they can also come to right. this so, centre. Um, we offer it in um, various areas in East Harlem, but one in particular, we do the second Monday of every month, and we do a breast education where we talk to women and men about um, breast health and what they should be doing to take care of their breasts mm -hmm. and to examine themselves. And then we have a provider come in who does a clinical breast exam and refers them for whatever exam is necessary. We then, the Breast Health Resource Program, covers the cost of a mammogram or a sonogram biopsy. So do they take it to Harlem or do they come here? They come here to get okay. their um, imaging done. So say somebody comes in for a mammogram, we cover that cost. Um, and then if they need a sonogram or a biopsy, we cover that as well. If they get diagnosed, we then help them get insurance so that they could be followed here. That's amazing. Tell us about some of the other programs you're offering. You said a crafts group? Yes, we have a uh, crafts and laughs group, which meets in here every Wednesday. <laughs> um, and it's really a great group. We do all sorts of different things. Um, most recently, I was teaching them how to knit a hat on a loom. Um, we have a sale that we do around the holidays every year. And it's a great group. It's not your traditional drop-in support group, but it's a group where you can just come in, you have fun. You don't necessarily have to talk about breast cancer, but you're surrounded by women who have gone through it, and so it's a great support for them. What are some other, other community programs that you're offering? So we also do the Monday night drop-in group, um, which is more of a traditional group. Um, everybody comes in, they talk about what's going on, and that group has been running for about 25 years. Um, it's a, also a great group. We have a young women's group for um, anybody who's been diagnosed before they were 40. Wow. Unfortunately, we have a lot of young women lately. Yeah. Wow. And so it's a great group for young women to um, be able to talk to other people who are going through what they've been going through and experiencing the same concerns um, and really a forum for them to sort of talk and be able to say, you know, I'm 23 and I had breast cancer and I don't know how to go out into the dating world now. So it's a great program for them. Uh, we offer a healthy lifestyles program, which we do twice a year, that offers um, nutrition, physical therapy, and stress and stress management, um, massage therapy as well as part of it. That meets twice a year. And then we have a swimming program that we started and we have our yoga program. So the yoga program um, we've been doing for about a year now, but before we worked with Kula for Karma, we had um, different variations of yoga and Pilates over the past four years. Um, our current program meets twice a week, mm -hmm. and we have- I see the pink yoga mats yes. over here, that's so cute. <laughs> we have one that's more of um, relaxing yoga, and then we have more vigorous yoga on Tuesday nights. And um, the women love, love the yoga. So tell me why they love the yoga, how it makes them feel. It makes, I think a lot of times after surgery, a lot of our patients feel like they're not ever going to be able to do what they were mm -hmm. able to do before surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're trying to find their new normal and being able to do yoga allows them to sort of gain some control over their body again and realize that they can come back and be stronger and do things that they were once able to do. The women that come to these groups, mm -hmm. Are there women currently in treatment or are they ex-patients? Is it becoming a, a large community of everybody's kind of coming back and yeah. supporting each other? Right, um, that's one of the lovely things about our groups is that you'll have someone who was diagnosed two hours ago to come into a group and there's someone who's been out of treatment and in remission for the past 15 years who still comes to group for that support. So. Um, they really do get a big spectrum of patients. You'll have someone currently in chemo, someone who finished chemo, someone who started radiation, someone who's been out for three years, and it's just, it gives them hope to say, hey, this person made it through chemo, so I can make it through chemo, and look at this person, she's already been out for four years, I, I'll be okay, I can do this. I would think the community aspect of, this, of these programs is very important to yeah. people currently going through can, you know, cancer treatment. Yeah because they have someone who's been through it. Right, and um, oftentimes I have a lot of patients say, you know, 
I can talk to my family about what's going on, but they don't really understand what it's like to have surgery or what it's like to go through chemo. And the, these women in group with me, they know, they get it. I don't have to explain what I'm feeling. I just, they just know. And so it's a nice thing for them to have, to be able to say, I don't need to really explain myself. I can just come in and say, I had a bad day and everyone in that room understands. You know, what role does laughter and positivity and community play in, he in healing somebody who has, is fighting cancer? I think emotionally, it helps them a ton. Um, Breast cancer is not just a physical diagnosis, it takes its emotional toll on women as well. And so when we offer these programs, it really does help them, motivates them to move forward and to do their treatment and to have hope that there's something better on the other side of this. So it definitely brings them together and just gives them support that they may not have had otherwise. And do you find these programs make a difference in, in their lives, you personally, yeah, dealing with them? I think so. I think um, more often than not, women who have participated in group have a much healthier post-cancer perspective on life, I guess. Are there any other support groups here at the Breast Center? Yes, we have um, our BRCA support group for women who have the genetic mutation for breast cancer. Um, and it's a great group that my supervisor also runs. There's not many in the city, actually. And um, it really helps women who have been, who are BRCA positive, make decisions about their care and find a forum where they can speak to other women who are going through this and making decisions about what to tell their families or what surgery they're gonna opt for or what sort of ongoing screenings they're gonna do. So it's a great group for anyone who's positive. How old are the women that are found positive? Does it vary in age or is it usually younger? Um, it varies in age. We have women who are 18, 19 who, ha who are BRCA positive and it goes up. To, we have patients who are in their 50s or 60s who are And BRCA, BRCA positive, positive means that they have the genetic? The genetic, the gene that um, generally causes breast cancer, it puts you at a much higher risk of getting breast cancer in your lifetime. Do you know what the risk is? Not off the top of my head, but it's significantly higher for someone who is BRCA positive to have breast cancer. If I'm not mistaken, it's about 10 times more likely. Wow. Yeah. They need the support they then. They need the support. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us today. You're doing wonderful work, incredible work, and you're so young to be doing this work. Thank and you. keep up a great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>